not streaming. Correct, because they're streaming downstairs, and odds are it's not going to work very well. Very good. Today, I'm here to give you the assurance that I have not forgotten you. If we want to see the new evangelization become more than just jargon, if we want to see it grow legs and gain traction and change the world, we have got to take seriously our responsibilities as husbands and fathers and especially as sons of God. I want to propose to you then that something that our world is desperately in need of in the midst of this crisis is Catholic Christian masculinity. If you want to be a good father, then bring your children to confession with you. I can't get there unless I become a man of ascesis, a man of asceticism, a man of training. A man not doing penance, a man not disciplined, is not a man. You guys have up your game. You know what, guys, I gotta say, I, I love this the concept of the show. Warning, the Catholic Man Show is about to begin. Welcome to the Catholic Man Show. We're on the Lord's team, the winning side, so raise your glass. We are approaching year eight of the Catholic Man Show. And you know what the weirdest thing is? We just keep getting better looking. <laughs> it's been so long, and yet look, I mean, just look at us right now in the, in the monitor. I will do that. Like, we look good, bro. Okay. Especially me. All right, well, there you go. You, must... you, you look fine, too. I mean, <laughs> but it's been eight years. That's what I'm saying. Both of us are appreciating. We're lucky we don't have the first couple years on video. Dude, I will tell you, I was looking at my wedding picture. This yeah. is this is not even a joke. I just objectively am a handsomer man today than I was back then. I'm like fuller, you know? Yeah, you were very scrawny. Not, not quite so scrawny. Yeah. Like, I could totally... Totally beat me up back then. Like, if I were to face off, assuming that the fight ended like relatively quickly, right? Because you're, yeah, I am getting older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing that we have not asked, uh, and that it's very apparent we have not asked because I don't think we've had a single re- review on our podcast for Apple Podcasts in like maybe a year. So I thought we turned it off. Did we turn it off? I, well, not that I know of. You can't, you can't turn it off. I don't think no. so. So if uh, you've enjoyed the show, it would be nice if you would go and rate and review the show for Leave us. Leave us a five-star review. Yes. Um, and that would be very very beneficial as we uh, have not asked anybody to do that in a while. And it's very apparent. We just came off of a beautiful weekend at Clear Creek Abbey. Oh, so it nice was, there. Is incredible. It was our yearly retreat. It's not necess- It's not a silent retreat um, because no, it's it's quiet retreat. But it's a quiet retreat. Yeah. Uh, there is silence. Um, you know, a certain hour from certain from about hours. nine o'clock until about eight o'clock the next morning. If you don't, if you don't take a, a retreat for a weekend to just like better yourself and and to you know spend time with the Lord in in quiet. In prayer and being able to read, like I, I can't, I can't tell you how much I recommend this. You know, obviously, uh, nature, uh, grace builds on nature. So if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not allowing yourself the quiet time to like decompress totally. and, and to turn off all the loud noises and in uh, things that are like keeping you up at night, yeah. Uh, if you don't allow those things to kind of like quiet your mind and your soul and allow like our Lord to just kind of penetrate into your soul to, to allow him to like be with you for a full weekend. I like, I I just think you're missing out. Like if you can do it like for a weekend, if even just a day, like once a year, just like grab a couple of buddies and say like, Hey, we're going to go out up to the mountains. We're going to go to an abbey. We're going to go, um, 
you know, rent an Airbnb even and just like ha- invited a priest and like, you know, have like a, yeah. a weekend, you know, retreat, like whatever you got to do, just make it happen because it, it is just like an opportunity. You definitely, you need to take some time away from the kids. Away. Yeah. Away. Yeah, I, I think that that's. And, and it's just like an opportunity. That's a, it's that's a, grace, a big part of it. It's a grace you filled week. It's a grace filled weekend. Yeah. Um, and, and you're and just hopefully you have a like hopefully there's an abbey or a monastery near where you live that you can go and do okay because the idea of making a retreat I think it's an attractive idea to most people who are you know uh, striving after holiness but a lot of people don't know what to do okay and like maybe you it's don't okay you don't may, have to maybe you don't have a well, yeah but but still I, I think you need some direction or something but at Clear Creek you know, you can fly to Clear Creek. You can, you can get to Clear Creek. Yeah. Um, and it's not expensive to stay there, right? Um, if you do nothing else other than go to Clear Creek or a place or, another, you know, an abbey or a monastery like Clear Creek and simply pray all the hours all with the, the monks. All the liturgy of the hours. Yes. Um, you know, get up when they do and, like, just basically do what they do throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Um, that alone... I mean, that, first of all, it's going to keep you pretty busy with praying mm-hmm. throughout the day, but it's uh, very ordered. Mm-hmm. It's very, you know, obviously it's monastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and so even if you're by yourself, you could go to Clear Creek or a place like it and just do that for a couple of days. And I think you'll be am- amazed at how refreshed you'll be. Yeah. Um, really, like, so when we do this, we typically show up on Friday, you know, afternoon, mm-hmm. early evening. Um, we're there all day Saturday, and we leave Sunday. So it's really a full day, is really what right. it is. Um, but and it it would be nice. In the past, some of our group have shown up on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. So you know you a get full that day Friday. Yeah, yeah, because it takes about a day for your mind to shut down, to like disconnect from all of the noise of your phone, of you know just modern mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. But. It's amazing how after being there just Saturday evening when I was like praying, my mind was less distracted, mm-hmm. right? I found prayer, prayer came more easily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's a lot of that is simply because I have been disconnected now for about a day mm-hmm. from all of these things. I also think that there's, um, you know, a special grace simply from being on the grounds, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that there's something, something about that yeah, too. Yeah. Just I simply agree. being there, mm-hmm. that. But there's it's just a holy so place. So enriching to to just take a book with you, and just dedicate the weekend to say, I'm just gonna pray and read. That's all I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. Pray and read. Yeah. Um, Which you could, like you were saying, you could do anywhere. Yeah, you can do that anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, so what do we what do we have in what are we pouring tonight? Okay, so. This is a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottle. It's called Rich and Heavy. So this is a um, special, very this Highland is like a, smelling. Like, um, so this is a Dalmore. So it is a Highland. Yep, it's a Dalmore. Um, and every now and then they'll do a like kind of a special release, which is kind of funny because all of them. Essentially, special. every bottle is a special release, right? Because you can't get it anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a hand. This says it's. I d- so I don't know much about this bottle because the tasting notes, I bought it so long ago, the tasting notes are all gone. Okay. But it is a Dalmore. Um, it's, it says it's hand-selected flavor adventure. USA exclusive. Um, but I do know it's a Dalmore. It's a nine-year, nine-year-old Dalmore. Yeah, fruit, uh, the apple and pear combo, honey, wheat, and just a little bit of oat. Is on the nose. Have you tried it? No. We're We're on the the Lord's team. The winning side. Raise your glass. Cheers. Cheers to Jesus. Jim, it's great to have you here with us. Indeed. I'm excited to hear what you uh, have to say on the yummy scale. Well, I've tried it already, and I think it's very high on the yummy scale. You can definitely, it's definitely a Dalmore. It's got that, like, rich, like, uh, like those rich, that rich fruit flavor of a, of Dalmore. You know what I mean? Like some, like almost plums. Mmm. Wow. 
Yeah, that is rich and heavy. That yeah. is a perfect name for it. Yeah. Yeah, just, what, do you, what do you think, Jim? I, I like that. It's it's up there. So He likes it, and it's up there. 4.9. 4.9. 4.9, people. That is high on the on the yummy scale. That is very it's that's very yummy is yeah. what it is. Yeah. The four point nine is like very yummy. Yeah. That is that is really good. It's almost maximum yummy. Fifty nine point seven A B V. Yeah. Not for swigging, glugging, or knocking back. Correct. That's what it says on the bottle. So I don't recall it's exactly. Really I think this bottle was probably like but, in the hundred and thirty dollar range. But, something like that. Uh Dalmore for me is my favorite Highland. Totally. Down more, but like, is my favorite Highland Scotch. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of my favorite. It's definitely my favorite. There's a, you know a lot of, a lot of the Glens are good, um, but I think Dalmore is just the best. Yeah. Man, that is good. Boy, it just smells like bacon in here. <laughs> you know what? It just smells. Why do you say that? Because I do still have a very very distinct odor. From the activities I've been participating in today, doesn't matter how many times I wash my hands, like it still smells like the things that I've been doing. So uh, right after our retreat today, in fact, at the retreat, I was very nervous. Um, and in fact, like Pamela had to tell me, like, you need to stop worrying about this. You know, you're on this retreat. Don't worry. If something happens, I'll call my dad. Yeah. And every, it's like everything's gonna be fine. And I was like, you're right. I need to. I need to just put this. Detach. In. I need to detach. And I went back to my room and I prayed about it. I was like, Lord, this is bothering me, and I'm just gonna put it in your hands, because I know it was bothering you so much that you were telling me about it, and I ended up having a freaking dream <laughs> that, that that night that you were panicking over it. Yeah. And you came walking. In I my gotta room. go. I gotta go. I was like, okay, well then go. Why, Why? are you waking me don't, up? Don't tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, when we get back, we're going to hear a little bit about what Dave has been up to. Uh, Farmer Dave. Be right back. I'm excited to be officially now a swineherd. I mean, I guess yeah. I was before, anyway. I mean, you were, yeah. So when you make one of those visits to an abbey, uh-huh. should it concern you that, what if you're not uh, familiar with the Latin mass? Is that it a- should not concern you. No. No. Not at all. You can follow everything. No. no. I mean, you can't I mean, <laughs> no. But it's just fine. You might not know what's going on, but but it I won't mean, matter. you know, they have they have the book that I mean. So first of all, okay, we can maybe do. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll talk, talk about we that. We can talk about that. Oh, okay. I thought I'll tell my story. I'll finish. I feel, I feel like we have to yeah, finish my yeah, story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then I'll we'll bookend that. Back to the abbey. Back to the abbey. Just real quick. A little bit of an oaky afterbirth. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Before we get back on the episode, I will tell you. The pig totally ate it. <laughs> the pig ate all That's, of all of the birth leftovers. That doesn't surprise me. No. I mean all I think most animals do that. Yeah. It's for a couple reasons. It's very nutritious, but also it's very um it has a lot of strong odor because there's so many hormones in it and it'll it attracts predators and so hmm. uh, you know if that makes sense if a coyote or a wolf or yeah. something smells it you, you want you don't want them to right yeah that so what else are you gonna do you're gonna i guess i gotta eat it you know we recycle here hmm. on the farm okay very good Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles. We got Adam Minahan here. <laughs> I say we have him here. That's the royal we. There's been very few episodes where we have not had me here. Very few. One that I can recall. Two. Two that I can recall. Yeah. Two. Uh, I believe it's two. There's an episode. That in you fact, did. one you were here, but you were just downstairs because right. you were very sick. Because I was like, incredibly sick with Father Danny Grover. Correct. We talked about divine mercy. And then the other one was with uh, you had one with Deacon Harrison Garlic, who was not a deacon yet. Yes, correct. Talking about the deacon. That was like one of our very early. Like, 
uh, episode 14 or 15. Yeah, very early episodes. And that was the episode where um, Lefroy entered our life. It entered my life anyway. Yeah, and then yeah. as soon after, it entered yours. It's a, a glorious, it was a, it was, glorious time. You know, the, it's amazing. If you sit back and think about it, all of the things that Harris, Deacon Harrison, Archdeacon, his, his chancellor, Lord Chancellor himself. Lord, Lord Chancellor has given, put, you know, like all the good things he's put in our lives. I know. Let's raise a toast to Dang. Deacon. Okay. Deacon Garlic, everyone. Pray for that man's soul. Cheers. Okay. Okay, so um, where did we live off? Uh, what you were doing. Oh, so I was. it was like really bothering me at the Abbey. Yeah. And it, it was even bothering you. And yeah. everybody kept asking me, like, so, so, what, so are you, annoying. what have you been up to? And I felt like I felt like I was talking about it a lot. It's like, well, you know. Uh, Just waiting for these pigs to get. Yeah, so I, I got, I recently uh, acquired two pigs, okay? The thing is that both of them are pregnant. Well, now only one of them is pregnant. So one of our pigs farrowed this afternoon, this evening. And it was just perfect. Uh, you know, I told you I went back to my room because it's just like I was worried I was going to miss it. Because if it if they start giving birth in the middle of the night and it's very cold, the piglets can die because they need to stay very, very warm, you mm-hmm. know. And so um, I was worried that was going to happen. I know. And so I came back to my room and I was like, all right, Lord, I'm just putting this in your hands. And so I got home from the Abbey and my pig went into labor 10 minutes later. Literally. Like, I got home, and immediately it started. That's incredible. It was. It was just like the Lord, is, he, he's like, don't worry, bro. I got you. You know I got you. Yeah. And he totally did. Um, so it was very exciting. Um, I've, I, you know, I obviously have five children, so I've witnessed birth before. Um, five times? Yeah, five times, but I saw it ten times today. You've actually witnessed it six, I guess, with your own, but you just don't recall it. It was during one of your blackout phases. <laughs> you're talking about my own birth yeah yeah i'm not really sure i mean if if you want to count that we can count it i wouldn't count it but if we if you want to count it adam we can count it you're right six six times um so anyway it's just very exciting to watch you know for the pigs to be born they're obviously very cute mm. they're very cute um you know do they look delicious they, they do <laughs> <laughs> i mean you just look at them it's like oh gosh you look like you are gonna be so good someday. Yeah, like, one of them's gonna be mine. I'm gonna pick it. Yeah, it out. yeah, yeah. That'd be exhausting. So, uh, uh, it was just very fun, you know. And it came. It was just such a great day. I got home from the from this retreat feeling good. All of a sudden, there's like new life on the farm. Yeah, you know, on a Sunday, which feels, it just like that's the day for like new yeah. life. And it happened. It wasn't at night, which is uh, fantastic. You know, cause yeah. you don't have to stay up all night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was kind of long. It was like five and a half hours long. So it's long for you. It's long for the pig. The pig, uh, she was code code name Miss Piggy. She was very, very, very tired. Yeah. When, when it was all over, because usually, usually it's like three to four hours, and so she this was, was quite exhausted. a bit longer. You're over there like welcoming life, and I'm over here at my house on a Sunday, just trying not to like lose my salvation after a a wonderful weekend yeah you have a lot of sickness up and up in this piece yeah I got right here sick, sickness up in here and then like i was putting furniture together which is always <laughs> oh, yeah. where is that thing you sent me a picture where is it, it? it's downstairs, downstairs. In my room. yeah it's like uh, it, it was is, it ikea yes and L- ikea is hilarious because it's it's like a lego set because there's no words to the instructions there's really yeah ikea, IKEA does I like had, i've done so i've done an ikea piece before like, but it's oklahoma years doesn't have an ago. ikea or at least tulsa doesn't and so like this yeah. is kind of a new thing for us i know everywhere yeah, is else there one in oklahoma city uh, maybe be. i don't know i don't know but anyway it's just like weird uh okay i, I do want to uh, ask real quick because or uh, mention because jim jim asked in, in between the breaks which by the way you can go to our youtube page and catch in between segments but uh, he was asking about if you don't understand the latin mass or the the lat you know latin be praying in Latin for the liturgy of the hours. Like, can you follow along? Because Clear Creek Abbey, uh, they pray, it, you know, in everything Latin. is in Latin. And yeah. um, so here, here's here's some and advice it's, that it's I, all in Gregorian chant too. Yes, uh, here here's the advice that I give people um, who, who this is their first time experience. I say, don't take a book. Uh, just sit. Oh, you mean be, like the book, the book to try to follow along? Yeah, with the, the book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just sit, and and just be there. Yeah, and just witness the beauty, listen to it, 
just pray with them. Like, you know, just just be there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a couple of the hours that are real easy to follow along. Compline is yeah. very easy. Prime, Prime is, very is very easy. easy. Yeah. Um, but terse, like, terse is, is pretty easy. Um, but just sit there and be. And then, yeah. but and, and then like as you can, because there's there's the do a that, whole rhythm. Do that there's for a, a few. There's of a them rhythm, right? You know, because yeah. they pray a psalm, they pray a psalm, and then like they have a glory. You know, they say the glory be, and then so they all stand up, and it, like there's this rhythm of like the ups and downs of and, and uh, back and forth, back and forth, like. Yeah. It, you you, you and catch it's, on. it's just beautiful just to sit there and listen to and if you're trying to follow along with the book and, you and you're miss not it. and you're not ready and if you don't know how to easily follow along with right. the book then you're not gonna you're gonna spend all your time trying to find it's like where are they what's the latin right you know and instead of just close the book and just just listen right um even though you don't know what they're saying it's still very prayerful yeah you know because the gregorian chant them there's something about the melody um, the the, tone. like the intervals the that tones. they use yeah that is just um it like resonates in your soul mm -hmm. you know especially when you are there live so whenever now that you know how to use you know you, you're, you use a book and you know how to follow along yeah do you as they're as they're praying it in latin do you read it in english yes. as they go yes like in your head yes i, I read I the same and thing. pray the english as they're praying the Latin. Yeah, because basically all of their prayers are going through the Psalms. Right. They pray all the Psalms every week. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're just you're just praying through the Psalms. And so and that's how I participate is I in my in my heart, yeah, pray that like I try to mean the words of the psalm, mm -hmm. you know, put myself um in well, in there. One of the beautiful things also is that they have low mass, and when they have low mass they have basically like 12 masses happening all at once right so there's like six yeah the, like because yeah, they all more. have little cubbies uh that they go in and they, they pray the cubbies yeah. is not the technical term it's, it's a cubby i don't know what it is but uh but they all pray on, on, on side altars side altars and yeah. then they have the main altar as well uh this morning i for low mass i went and uh i was there and they had an icon of saint elizabeth ann seaton who is my wife's patron saint and so it was oh, just was that so her confirmation saint? Yeah. Oh, cool. And so it's just, it was just so beautiful to be able to to pray, low, you know, yeah. the little mass uh, there. I was praying with St. Maximus this morning. Oh, that's awesome. Maximus. Is this the Eastern saint? saint? Yeah. He's a uh, stig, stig, which, stigmata. Which is uh, fitting yeah. because we're, we're going to be talking about Eastern. Uh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. E uh, you know, kind of the Eastern, some Eastern saints. Yeah, Eastern spirituality almost. Dude. I love uh, th this book. The book, the uh, series, the texts yeah. that we'll be pulling from. The volumes. From. The volumes. Oh, yes. So many volumes. Yeah, four Max, of them. Turn up the volume. Yeah. So. Um, but so, yes, that was a good question, Jim. Yes, you can go and follow. You will, Even if you don't know Latin, if you, know, if you don't know the traditional mass. Don't be intimidated. Yeah. It's really great. Just do it. And and actually, like once you go and sit, you can go and if you know what hour you're about to pray, which there's easy to know because there's a schedule posted outside, you can grab the book for that hour and very easily follow along and mm -hmm. pray along with the, these. These are like some of the most ancient prayers that the church has is these exact prayers that they're praying in Latin. Um, and so it's just it's beautiful to be able to so easily go and pray these prayers, even though I don't speak Latin, I can still do it with them. It's awesome. You connect to not only the you know those who are praying it throughout the church, but those who have ever prayed it and who will ever yeah. pray it. And it's also a liturgy. I mean, the that's yeah. it's the liturgy of the hours. So it's one of the highest forms of prayer outside of the holy sacrifice. Right. Yeah. Of the so mass. it's not just praying; you're actually doing a liturgy. Yeah. Which is very cool. Very nice. Yeah. Um. Let, let's talk. So about, shall so we? What, are we? what are we talking about today? So. Um, we're going to be talking about the seven forms of bodily discipline okay. today. Okay. Um, w the text that we're going to be pulling from that we were mentioning just a second ago is the Philokalia. I know. I always say Philokalia, and I know that's not right, but that's just like what I started calling it oh, uh, a well, couple of years ago. I don't know how to say it. Uh, I'm just saying well, you know, how I, I would I, say it. I asked, so I have a guy, uh, a guy who works with me. He's an uh, Eastern Catholic. And he said Philokalia? Uh, oh, yeah, I think he said Philokalia. Okay. Um, 
but I say Phil Collier. Sweet. I feel like I nailed it then. So one of the ways, like, because Eastern... Uh, tell it, tell us what this is. What is the Phil So uh, Eastern, like, Eastern Catholicism is very interesting and, and uh, a little, like, people don't understand what it is or, like, what it is. Yeah. We're, talking about, um, we're not talking about not orthodoxy. Very, no, but it's not, it, it's not something that's very familiar to a lot of people. Um, the best way to get from familiar with it is uh, a book by it's called The Way of the Pilgrim. It's a beautiful book. It's short. It's easy to read. It's a beautiful uh, mm. book talking about um, a monk who it, th- we don't know who the author is. He intentionally did not uh, put his name on on the book, but it's about this uh, this pilgrimage that this this monk goes on to basically learn how to pray without ceasing. The desire to pray without ceasing and what that re- really truly means. And he goes to town to town to asking all of these teachers and uh, spiritual gurus to uh, ask him what does it mean. Throughout the whole journey, he, he holds two things in his hand, the Bible and the Philokalia. And these are the things that he... Those are the things he found that were the, the essentials of life. Yes. Um, so uh, we're out of time on Catholic Radio. We'll be right back. You ready? Mm-hmm. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. Thank you for all of our loyal Catholic radio listeners. We're on at least 23 Catholic radio stations across the U.S. If you are listening uh, on podcast right now and want the Catholic Man Show to be on Catholic radio in your hometown, reach out to us. We'd love to be able to provide that to your Catholic ra- local Catholic radio station free of charge. It's very easy to do. Uh, so uh, reach out to us. It's all formatted correctly. This is why there's certain breaks in the podcast. If you're like a new listener and wondering like, why do these, why are there breaks? This is the reason why is because it's actually a, a Catholic radio show as well. We also just don't want to overload the system because we're afraid if we don't step away, let the system cool down. Yes. The manliness might overheat. Yeah, we don't want to rev it up too high. Yeah. Um, so we were talking— Your phone about, can't handle it. That's the thing. We were talking about, uh, you know, Eastern, like, uh, the Eastern uh, side of the church. You know, the uh, Pope Benedict had a beautiful saying uh, of, like— or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think it was actually JP2 that had a beautiful saying talking about the two lungs of the church breathing together. Um, the Eastern side of the church has a more of a, a mystic side to it. It's, it is, Which I like. Personally, it's a, be- it's a beautiful side. I favor the mystics, and and something that's not uh, familiar to a lot of Western uh, Roman Catholics. Yeah, the uh, Latin Catholics, because we're not. Um, there's just not a lot of mysticism um, that we 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 promote. And so anyway, one of the things I was saying before the break is is talking about how like if you're wanting if you're interested in this, it's a beautiful prayer uh, talking about uh, it's the uh, the Jesus prayer. Um, and the Way of the Pilgrim is, is what it's called. There's actually two books to it, um, but the first one's called The Way of the Pilgrim. The Pilgrim t- holds into his in, in his hand and is like one of the things that he cherishes the most outside of the Bible is is this this compilation of texts. And it really what it is is it's ancient uh, Eastern Catholic writings from a lot of it. St. Nicholas, I believe, St. Maximus, uh, the Confessor. Um, there's this, there's yeah, Saint Maximus. That's the guy I was praying with today. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's there, and it's just a compilation of Eastern Father texts uh, on spirituality, on on virtue, on vice, on uh, prayer. There's a lot of different um, you know topics that they talk about, but those are the kind of the essentials that they that they have. Yeah. Uh, one of them, which we did an episode on on watchfulness, uh, which I wrote an article actually for uh, mm-hmm. on, on this topic. Um, which is beautiful. It was a, it was a, it's a beautiful concept of, of uh, understanding almost kind of the psychology of like whenever a, an evil thought comes into your head, like what you should do about that, you know, uh, and like how you should recognize it and how to to push it away uh-huh. um, and, and not allow that to fester because I think everybody can relate to this idea of something coming into your head and thinking about it and not, oh, I'm not going to do it. And then like... A few minutes later, you're still entertaining that idea, and you're like, "Well, I mean, I mean I, like, 
Like, I'm not going to do it, but I may like think about doing it. <laughs> you know, and then like, you know, five minutes later. But I'm then, obviously not going to do it. But, but then it's but like. It, but you know what? It'd be funny. But it'd be, it'd be, it'd kind of be nice. Like, I would like to do it. And then yeah. like, you, you, you see this, this, the road that you're traveling yeah. down. I mean, right? I'm obviously not going to do it. Right. But, but God, I, maybe I'll be tempted by but, it. But yeah. It would, you know, like, I'm not going to do it, but like. But it would be cool. Right. And, and so, um, like, anyway, I, uh, we I've did, a, done that. we did an episode on it called, it, uh, on the four. I'm just uh, four four steps of watchfulness. Um, you can go back and check that out. But anyway, so we're going to talk it's about um, uh, the seven. What is it called? The seven forms of the dis- uh, discipline of, of your bodily, body. Bodily discipline. Um, this is very appropriate, probably as we are approaching Lent. Um, if you're uh, doing Exodus ninety or you're thinking about doing Exodus Lent, right now they're they're talking about pre Lent, which is something that the church actually used to do a lot. Did you know this? I did. Yeah, there was actually pre-Lent. This is actually something that uh, all Except Catholics... Except for Sunday. Yeah, it's like all Catholics used to do this, right? And it was basically... And this totally makes sense. Before you go running, right, you stretch, right? This makes sense. I um, don't. I don't stretch, I have to tell you that. You don't? You just go... Well, you should... You, it, shows how long it's been since you've actually been running as an old man. I don't run. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. But even when I did run... But you were younger then. I don't know that I stretched, though. That's a, a poor move. But anyway, it, it, all it is is it, it, it's just stair-stepping. there's stepping. actually two schools of thought on it. No, there's... Yeah, there is. Uh, either some, some people some people say stretch afterwards, not before. Uh, but they no. say just warm up. No, I'm, tell, I'm not kidding. People say it. Uh, anyway, it's a stair stepping of. I just of, don't think you should run. That's what I think. Like I think running is for people who are crazy. Can I? Can I finish? <laughs> like I've been. So, <laughs> pre Lent is basically like a stair stepping into Lent, right? So it's a it, it's a slow progress of like okay, we're gonna like uh, we're, we're gonna not have meat on Wednesdays and Fridays, and uh, then it's like not dairy. We're not gonna have dairy products, and like so it's just slowly preparing yourself um, for the Lenten sacrifice. So as we're approaching this time period, it's it's good to be talking about like yeah. bodily mortification, discipline. Yes. Yeah. Actually, we're not talking. Yeah, mortification tends to carry like connotations. I don't know what he's showing. Yeah, us the sh- Shrove Tide. Yes, on Tuesdays. Shrove yes. Tide. I was I was really hoping, Jim, that you were showing him like an article that says like you should never stretch before you go running. That's really what I was hoping it was. Instead, it was something helpful yeah. and religious, which is great. Which is really great, Jim. Okay, so once again, uh, these are. This is written uh, by Saint Peter of Damascus. Um, so you know, like like you mentioned, this book is full of the writings of different ancient uh, saints or or abbots. Not all of them are saints. Right, Some of them, of them were like the abbot of a certain monastery or abbey. But most of them are very unfamiliar to us. Uh, Typically from the third, fourth centuries. Yeah. Not to mention they're not Western, like you said. Right. So that's another reason. Anyway, so this is um, him writing what he, he viewed to be the seven forms of bodily discipline. Okay. Um, the first one is stillness. Hmm. Okay. Not exactly what you'd think about. You wouldn't, I don't think that that's something that springs to mind when you think of a bodily discipline. But stillness, and um, there's a note here that it was talks about what what he means by that in Greek. In Greek, the word stillness not only um, refers to like an inner tranquility, but also exterior withdrawal into solitude. So literally, like having solitude. Did you experience this recently? Just at the Abbey? No, 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 no. Uh, you told me about it. Like you were wanting, like you were wanting to do things, and you realized like your appetites were like. Telling you to do all these things, and so you just sat. Oh yeah, yes, I did. Yeah, so um, at the beginning of Exodus ninety, yeah, um, I was home alone, can't watch movies, can't you can't basically do. There's no entertainment, mm-hmm. like no nothing you can do. Um, and I, I caught myself like, oh, maybe I'll go smoke my pipe, and I was like, no, I'm not going to do that because the only reason I the only reason I want to do that is just because I like want to like be entertained mm-hmm. you know i could just feel like oh I, my appetite's just like fussing mm-hmm. and um and i said no i'm not gonna do that and i just sat there 
just I had a glass of tea, drank some some hot tea, just sat there in quiet, and just like listened to my appetites complain, <laughs> and said, "Get it out of your system. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Keep going. Yeah, what else you got?" Um, and it was very boring. <laughs> <laughs> so boring. Uh, but I just knew that like, hey, yep, this is uh, this is why I need Exodus 90. You mm-hmm. know, I need programs like this uh, because otherwise my, my, I just like slowly, I have not, I have not mastered temperance. I mean, that's, that's the long and short of it, you know, and uh, my appetites get out of whack over time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's a kind of a, I've gotten a lot better um, than what I used to be several years ago. But, you know, by the time nine more months rolls around, I'm usually ready again. Yeah. You know, I need it. Uh, well, and this makes sense, right? Because, you know, even the Psalms, since we've been reading them uh, quite a bit recently. Um, over the weekend. Over the weekend. Yeah. You know, be still and know that I am God. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it, it's very hard to, uh, it, or let me say this, it's very easy to, to, to be the master of your own domain, you know, in this world, right. You know, to, to, to be like, no, I'm in charge of this. I'm in charge of this, especially because if you have a family, you know, in, in you're the, you're the head of the home. So like you're having to do all of these things and like make all these decisions with the, within the household and like continually like do all of these things. Um, and then not being still, uh, doesn't allow you to, to, to unite with God. Like this, the, this is the importance of, of adoration, right? Mm-hmm. Having a weekly yeah. adoration hour. Adoration is stillness. Uh, to, to just be still in front of the Blessed Sacrament, knowing that for 2,000 years, our Lord has been waiting for this very moment for you to walk into that chapel to spend time with you and for you to just sit there and allow His love and mercy to, to pour upon yeah. you. You know, it's also what we were just doing in our retreat. I mean, there was a lot of stillness. Even though we went together... You know, it's kind of like we all go at the same time. It's not like we're actually formally like a group on this retreat. I mean, we are a group, but right. You know, most of the time I I was by myself. Right. Um, same here. Either in my room studying or reading or praying, or uh, you know, or down praying with the monks. Even though most of our group was there, it's not like we're talking to each other, right? right. And so um, having that withdrawal separation. Solitude. Solitude. Yes. It is it's an essential thing and it's very difficult. Right. Sergio Lange uh in, in the intellectual life talks about the importance of uh uh holding the that time uh for solitude. He says you know, in there we've talked about this before, but he, he talks about how the importance of like if you want to take your intellectual life seriously, you should dedicate two hours a day, regardless of your vocation into the intellectual life including that's including prayer so like you have prayer and, and, and reading and reading and he talks about like how you have to make sacrifices to make that happen it's a it's a difficult decision but you have to say like no i'm, I'm pulling myself away from the uh, uh the book the, the life uh the social life to withdraw for this Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles here with Adam Minahan, Jimbo Baggins at the door. So so far we're still on number one, stillness. Yeah. So let me let me just put a bow on that real quick because like Sergio Lange talks about this um, in Intellectual Life, uh, how there are times in which you have to guard yourself from the social life in order to take your intellectual life seriously. So he talks about how uh, solitude is something that you should take. And you should treasure, and you should guard it with with all your might. Uh, and so, if you're if you're wanting to take your your mm. prayer and intellectual life seriously, that you you should be willing to sacrifice some other good for a greater good, namely uh, being in the presence of, of our Lord and like sharpening your intellect, so that way you can love Him deeper. Right? The more sure. you love, or the more you know, the more you can love, the more you can love, the more you can serve. Yeah. And I, I do want to make one comment about this that the um, these these were um, St. Maximus, no, um, St. Peter... Uh, Damascus. Damascus, thank you. He was writing this to um, monks. 
Okay, right. so yeah, yeah. this is specifically written to monks, but um, so much of the great spiritual works um, were, and were, and what you know, we just take them or applying this. I just want to read some of his comments here. Okay, he says, um, "This is on stillness. By removing ourselves from human society and distraction, we escape from turmoil and from him who walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Instead, we have but one concern: how to do God's will and prepare our soul." so that it is not condemned when we die. <clears throat> he goes on to say that um, uh, we have, that through, our, through this stillness, through this solitude, um, we have come to see what we could never have hoped to perceive had we lived outside our cell. Hmm. I mean, if, that makes sense also because like, if you think about the times in which you've sinned, like hmm. a lot of them have been with with a group of people, sure, or influenced by them, yes, right, or trying to catch up with the, you know a lot of them, um, yeah, and I think that there's this is a form of fasting that mm-hmm. he's that he's talking about. It's a form of sort of a social fasting, um, a fasting from the idea that, um, and, and obviously this isn't this in no way is counter to the need for fraternity. No, <clears throat> this but, this is not saying anything about that. No. Um, what it is saying is a, a fasting from keeping up with fashion, with trends, with... You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, when I heard Father Mike Schmitz one time talking about uh, like the importance of going to bed early. And like saying, yes. and saying like, yes. no, uh, even when you're having a great time with a group of friends, like, and you don't want to leave. Like, you know, those times where it's like, man, things are just... This is the just, conversation's just, just getting good. Like so fun, and like I'm I'm having so much fun yeah. with all my friends. Uh, but you know, like if I don't leave right now, I'm not getting up early and praying. Yeah, yeah. You have to getting up early is actually easy. It's going to bed early. Going to bed early is the hard thing. I am because obviously I'm you, trying my best to really like hone in on that. Yeah, and going to bed I early. Take, I take that very seriously. It doesn't mean getting less sleep. That's not what it means. It means going to bed earlier, and actually, that is the really hard thing to do. Number two. Numero dos. The second form of bodily discipline consists in moderate fasting. Moderate fasting. Just moderate. Adam, moderate fasting. And he goes on to say what moderate fasting is. He says, one should eat once a day, (laughs) and then not to the point of satiety. We should eat one kind of simple and readily accessible food, if possible, the kind of food that we do not relish particularly. In this way, we can overcome gluttony, greed, and desire and live without distraction. But we should not refuse any kind of food completely, lest thereby we wrongly reject things that, being created by God, are wholly good and beautiful. That reminds me of the one of the Clear Creek monks who, who talked to us one time and said, like, you should never go with uh, eating a meal without some sort of sacrifice. Yeah. And he said, like, you should be able to have 10 people around you if they're all watching you eat. And none of them would be able to say, all of them would say, oh, he gave up this or he gave up that. Like, they'd never be able to pinpoint, all 10 of them would never be able to say in like, like, unanimously saying, like, oh, well, he did this as a sacrifice within the, within the meal. He said, yeah. like, whether that be, like, oh, I actually wanted three shakes of salt and One, I only did yeah, two. exactly. Or, or you like wait 10 seconds before your first bite. Or, right. Or like, you know, whatever it is. It, uh, it's something small. It's the small things that God likes the most, I think, sometimes. Yeah. I just think it's hilarious that he calls this moderate fasting because he's essentially saying only eat one meal a day and then like even then, not to the point where you're like, you should still be hungry after your one meal. Well, again, And then... This is exactly only one kind of food. Like, yeah. what'd you have? I had potatoes, but only enough to take the edge off. Okay, like, well, this again. This goes back to uh, you know, Christians were just a little bit more hardcore back yeah. then. Yeah, uh, there's a there's a, a priest, Father Jason, who was at the summit. Uh, yep, who yep. Gave, who gave that? Uh, is he Eastern? Yeah, is yeah, he he's Eastern? Ukrainian. Okay, yeah. Ukrainian. That's what it is. And he made this this point. He said, like, when you're at Lent, is this uh, psychology of, of understanding like how how to how to fast well? Because most people say like I only I, like I eat, and I don't eat during these times, namely like on Fridays or something like that, right? Or Wednesdays or whatever it is. Like I eat, but I don't eat during these times. And he says like 
this is the wrong way of, of thinking about Lent uh, and fasting. He says, no. During Lent, you say, I don't eat. But I eat during these times to keep to keep myself sustained. Hmm. So it's a psychology thing. It, you yeah. know, it's it's this idea of like instead of saying like, "Oh, I eat," and that, but I abstain during these times. It's like, no, no, no. no. During the during this penitential time period, it's like I don't eat, but except, I eat except, except during except these that time, I have to maintain my body. Right. Except except during these time periods. Yeah. To 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 be able to carry out my vocation. Yeah. And he says like that little change, that little switch of going from uh, either I eat except for during these times, or I don't eat, except to do to, to fulfill my vocation, yeah. uh, is is a huge psychology uh, I, change. Um, I f- and, you know, he also, he even talks in here about water, about, and, you know, there was a, back in the day, water was a part of the fast, like, and, know, and it, it was like, um, you, that you should, on, so you should only drink days. like a little bit of water. And I think, I think the church has moved away from that now that, um, you know like, that, like the health you need, you need like yeah like it's like it's actually it's super bad for you not to right. drink water but that's what they used to do it's like only as much water as it takes to keep you alive you know actually that's a good light uh, that's a good like fast hack for you like uh, as you're fasting drink more water just drink more water yeah i actually find it easy to eat only one meal a day i say easy it's a um it's a it's uncomfortable. It bothers me, but I don't find it difficult. What I find to be difficult is in that one meal to to not just make totally Todd make Gorge. up to totally make up for it for the rest of the day. Two thousand calories. That's no. Meal. That's exactly what. And it's like yes, because I'm just by the time dinner rolls around, I am ready to eat. Yeah. And then when that first bite goes, it's like oh baby, here we go. Oh, that is good. Is there a way to put, like slide into my mouth, like just right. slide down the gullet? Can we? Like, let's yeah, just... like is there a truck? Yeah, we can back it up. I don't know. What's number three? Number three is the third form of bodily bodily dis. The third form of discipline consists in keeping moderate vigils. Once again, Adam, just a moderate vigil, okay? Tell something. Me, tell me what he says. Something just middle of the road. He says, we should sleep for half the night. And the other half, we should devote to the recital of psalms and to prayer, compunctive sorrow and tears. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know how much um, like uh, practical relevance this one has for like the married man, yeah, who has a family and a job yeah. to like show up for the next day. But I just I wanted to put it in here because I thought it was so funny that he was like just a moderate vigil, where you sleep half the night. And the other half, I want you sobbing. Yeah. I want you, I want you like, just to be wrecked in tears. and wrecked in compunctive sorrow and tears. And Jim, moderate. This is just a moderate vigil, okay? Because only you're only weeping for half the night. I mean, Saint. Uh, we, we said this uh, recently in, in another episode. That Saint John Chrysostom talks about like the importance of prayer during the middle of the night like and how efficacious it is especially for a uh, husband and father one thing that i've been trying to do at some like like because one thing about getting older is that you don't tend to sleep through the whole night like the idea of like sleeping not sleeping through the whole night was a foreign concept to me up until yeah. the last like maybe three four years hmm. um and i wake up a lot so yeah well you're you have narcolepsy so yeah. that that, that's different but like that was a foreign concept for me and but now i, I get up more in do the you have to pee night. in the middle of the night i do have to pee in the middle of the night most of the time yeah. yeah but like uh at least we still I, ca- hey adam at least we still can that's true um sorry jim uh but <laughs> I, I actually have no idea but <laughs> just um this seemed like a funny joke when i but said I, it <laughs> but i utilize that time uh to even just say a hail mary or a saint michael prayer um, during that time, like period. just when you wake up, yeah, when I wake up in the middle of the night, not like, when you have to get up, but no, just, when just like you... when I wake up, it's like, oh, I'm I'm already awake. Mm. I'm going to say a, a, a quick prayer. All right, uh, that's, that's a good also idea. one of the things that Sir T. Lunch talks about. Um, like when you first wake up in the morning, to verbally thank the Lord for the day, like that's the first thing that comes out of your lips. Yeah, the, what I, the first thing I do is say, tell the Lord, I don't want to get up, but for you, Lord, I can do it. Uh, and so I do. Yeah. So some one thing I do is like uh, the first first thing I get up when I get up uh, I I try to say like real thank loud you, thank you no wake Haley up thank thank you Lord thank you <laughs> right into her face yeah. yeah no what honey I'm just thanking the Lord yeah 
What's go back one? to sleep. What's okay, so the rest of these I think are a lot more practical. The fourth form of I thought we've we've made these pretty practical. Yeah, for no, us. I, I think they are. I mean, obviously, like staying up half the night is it's not is, practical. Is, yeah, it's just not realistic. But you can, you know, say a, a quick Hail Mary or St. Michael prayer, especially during uh, the 3 a.m. hour. I think it's a great idea. Um, so, so um, if you're listening on the radio, make sure to go download our podcast, subscribe, and give us a review. Um, we're going to cover the rest of these on the podcast. This is the Catholic Man Show with Adam Minahan and David Niles. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. You're not going to say cheers to Jesus? Oh, sorry. I didn't even think about it. Like, normally you say that. And so... But we were switched. We were switched. I know. We were all flippy Sorry. floppy. Well, that's why. You know what? It's the same thing. Like whenever you say a prayer with another person, you're you're the one that's normally leading. Yeah. And like, now they're leading. And, and now they're like, leading. And totally you're like, oh, I don't say the responses at my house. I was totally thinking about this weekend. This exact when thing. When we were doing the Angelus. No, when we were watching the monks, and I noticed like, oh, that monk is on a different side. I wonder if it like took him like two weeks to, to like, get used to because all of these prayers, he's used to saying like. This half of them. Right. And now he has to say the other half because he's on the other yeah. side of the choir. Jim, we were lunting earlier uh, oh, this dude. weekend. I went lunting twice in the same day. Very moderately. It was very a very moderate Lunt. lunting. Uh, so uh, we were Dave and I were lunting, and it was... I have to look this word um, up. 12 p.m., and so it was like, oh, well, let's play, pray the Angelus, and... Uh, Dave was like, "Yeah, I'll start it." And so he start he started praying the Angelus, and typically when I pray the Angelus, I'm leading the Angelus. Like it's like me praying it, and then my wife and kids, you know, re- respond. And so he starts it, and I'm like, "Okay, yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah, I got it." And then it was like, I like I kind of I was like, "Ooh," it just took me a second to like really like decipher like what am I supposed to say here, um. It's just interesting how that happens. But lunting is walking, taking a walk while smoking your pipe. Um, I also would like at some point to understand, like apparently there's another name for uh, smoking your pipe while riding horseback. Yeah, I was trying to look that up. I don't remember what it is. Um, I would like to be the man who comes up with the name for smoking a pipe while riding a side-by-side. Because I feel like that was way easier than riding a horse. And I don't know what I would call it. Um, I don't know. But I'd like to do it. Don't steal it from the audience. Winning. That'd be, that'd be so rude. What's, what's the next one? Okay. What do we got? Um, I really like this next one. Okay. Oh, um, but just before we move on, about number three, uh, he, what he says about these vigils is Praying, that he yeah. says, through ju- through ju- judicious fasting and vigil the body will become pliable to the soul healthy and ready for good works so that's that that's why you're doing it right when you're taking the things away from the body that it wants and that's the form that's all fasting right you know you're depriving a good from something that you desire um, in order to bring those appetites in line with the soul with the intellect with the will mm. so that all th- all of those might be united in one in one direction okay um the fourth form of discipline consists in recital of the psalms this is in order to what he says is it's in order to gall the body and humble the soul um and we do that that our allies the angels uh, may come to us and that we may know from them where we re- and that uh, we may know from them where we receive our help Otherwise, in ignorance, we may grow arrogant, thinking that um, what we do is due to us from our good actions. You know. Okay. Um, I, I think that the recital of the Psalms also have a lot of other um, benefits. The Psalms are so beautiful. Uh, in fact, very often when I do the daily readings, the Psalm is, is my favorite. Um, I, I like the, the repetition like you know that re- just repeating of of the verse uh, of the resp- response right of the psalm and um some of the psalms man it's like yes this is exactly how i feel um or 
sometimes I don't feel that way. And then when I read the Psalm, it's like, oh man, you, I should feel that, you know, like, um, such a good, it's such a good mirror for me sometimes, or such a good guidepost about like, hmm. um, some of, some of the Psalms that David wrote were just profound, you know, uh, clearly a man uh who was uh, had ascended the ladder of prayer who had ascended the ladder of just union with god um that that he was able to write these mm. things in such a real way too i mean and, and it's not like you know i think a lot of people often associate holiness with pacifism and you're not going to get any of that in the psalms um you know you'll you'll have side by side with this verse about just how like your law alone is what brings me joy. Next is like, and you have conquered and crushed my enemies. You have mm-hmm. like made them footstools under my feet. Uh, and just like some is gosh, it's just the, the reality, the realness in the Psalms. I've just really appreciate. So did you want to, were you, you going to say anything? I didn't know. I felt like I was cutting you off. No, I like, so I mean, to be honest, I haven't appreciated the Psalms near enough or as they should be until <laughs> actually I, I feel like I've started reading more uh, uh, of the great books um, because I don't I didn't feel like that I had the palate to have like to to appreciate the uh, poetics. And so there was a lot of th- times where I would feel like I would read the Psalms and it's like, yeah, I, I don't relate to this at all like this sounds actually kind of wimpy like i don't and, oh, really? or like i don't understand like uh you know like i i just wasn't yeah. uh i didn't have i didn't have the desire to have realism in my life as much you know and so like i was yeah you know this is i don't know 10 12 15 years ago right sure that i'm oh, talking yeah. about this before like i was you know i was wanting to hunt and like you know uh, hike and and camp and like do all these other things and it's interesting how as uh these things have inter- intertwined into my life while reading some of the great books and being able to understand uh, just the the beauty of of, of poetry, the be- the beauty of um, of epics. How much more I've 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 come to appreciate yeah. the Psalms. You know, I also think the Psalms don't get a fair shake in the um, liturgical throughout the like in the readings. You know, if you're just doing if you're just going to mass on Sunday, then there are um, uh, there's a huge section of the Psalms that you're never going to hear, and mm-hmm. they tend to be those more graphic. Um, like post-war victory psalms. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of because, it had to do with like what who's it? Uh, ha- Hagen or Haas or whatever it is, the guy who, who did all the liturgical music like in the seventies and eighties that like just ruined a bunch of like he pulled up a bunch of the psalms like you know on eagles' wings and all these kind of things like yeah. that just like do not resonate with me at all. Um, and I I associate that with a feminism and I like, I and I. Lament the fact that I am so nostalgic for some of them, because like so I went I grew up at Catholic school, singing those songs all the time. Okay, mm-hmm. like it's part of my childhood, mm-hmm. and I so like part. There's a part of me who's like, oh man, this song. Like we used to sing this. Like we used to just like rock this song, you know. <laughs> and it's objectively terrible, you know, but. Or maybe, I, can't, maybe I just can't avoid the fact maybe that it's not like, objectively terrible. Like some of them may not be objectively terrible, but well, just, the words they, aren't bad. They just don't belong in the liturgy. It, oh, just the music sucks. Yeah, a lot of it. Just that's that's belong. the problem. I mean, it's like on Eagle's Wings. Um, uh, the, if you were to just take the music out, uh, it's like what? That's a great. Oh, it's just the psalm. Right. Right. It's like okay, no, no problems here. Like, but could. Does it have to be a, to a hokey tune? I mean, anyway, what's the next one? Uh, number six, number five. Um, we still have three more. Okay. Yeah, consists in spiritual prayer. Um, prayer. Shocker. We're talking about prayer here. Yeah, and prayer is a discipline. I mean, I don't think people. No, it definitely is. I don't think people think about it is think about it that way. But prayer is absolutely a form of. And this is this isn't spiritual discipline. These are only forms of bodily discipline. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So he's saying that this is a, a form of pot- bodily discipline. Prayer off- is offered by the intellect and free from all thoughts. During So uh, distractions, mm-hmm. okay. Um, during such prayer, the intellect is concentrated within the words spoken and inexpressibly contrite. So it does take discipline. It do, it, you must discipline your body to sit there for an hour. I do a daily holy hour every day. Um, and um, in the beginning, that was just the fact of like kneeling for an hour or it's tough. Uh, I mean, um, it's physically hard on your knees in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, or and actually your back. These days it's actually more my back. Your lower back? Yeah. More than my knees. But uh so something that we I, I we may have said this in a previous episode, but it's it's worth saying again. It's talking about um the ascetic life. It says um <coughs> trying to pull it up but oh here it is the ascetic life leads to contemplation so remember we're mm-hmm. talking about like you know the disciplines like uh you know mortification things like that it should be leading you to contemplation and all ascetic practices is secondary to that goal so remember like these ascetic practices are the means to an end and the end is contemplation right right and like we're like that is the goal. So contemplation leads us to the union of God and the spiritual being obtainable to the spirit. It draws us towards this div- divinization, this, this this opportunity to this uh, theosis of being able to to become like God, um, and 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 to participate in His, uh, you know, in in union with Him. Mm-hmm. And so like, um while some of these things kind of sound like ridiculous, like well, what is it about like getting up in the middle of the night that would make me holier or, or like, like not eating a meal or like, what about cold showers actually draws me towards God? It's like, no, no, no. You're like, if that's the question you're asking, you're ask, actually missing the point because that's not the point. The point is not the cold shower. The point is not getting up in the middle of the night. The point is not uh, leaving the party early to go read. Right. The point is contemplation. The point is, Union with God. This is the only thing that matters mm-hmm. in this whole in, in, in your whole life. The only thing that matters is union with God. Mm-hmm. Correct. And so, if you're thinking about this as like, well, how is this actually helping me become union, like have a union with God? Like, um, that's that that's actually the question you should be asking. Is like, what 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 do I need to be doing to silence my appetites so that I can be in union right, with because God? Because they're so loud. Right. They're so loud. So I really like this next one. Um, the sixth form of discipline consists in reading the writings and lives of the fathers. And simultaneously, this part's funny, not only is this sixth discipline reading the lives of the fathers, but simultaneously paying no attention to heretics. Okay. Mm. So you have to do both at the same time. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like heretics, uh, they don't get as much play these days, but there's there's uh, more of them out there today. the The thing is, we're I feel I feel like the church is too afraid to like come out and formally declare people as heretics. Like she used to be a lot bolder. Hey, in in uh, Jim, her declaration. Like Timestamp this m- moment at, off air. I want to talk to you guys about something. Okay, just that is interesting. Stuff, right? That is interesting. Um, and so he goes on. He, this section is, is a little bit, is probably the, this is the longest one. So I'm just going to take some excerpts. Um, but he says, prayer is helped by reading in stillness. Okay, so now he's bringing, he's bringing mm-hmm. fa- back the first one about mm-hmm. stillness. Mm-hmm. So he's saying, reading in stillness. Prayer is helped by reading in stillness. This is true. Um, uh, in fact, uh, the masters have often encouraged spiritual reading before you pray in order to um, provide your mind and your intellect with good spiritual material Mm -hmm. as a launching pad towards contemplation. So he says, uh, prayer is helped by reading in stillness and reading is helped by prayer. That the two, the two go back and forth. Then this is the part I really like. He says, however, we need knowledge based on experience to understand these things. And that if we wish to attain knowledge of God, mere reading or listening is not enough. 
One cannot become a craftsman simply by hearsay. This is very Aristotelian, which is very shocking, being that it's from the Eastern. But, you know, knowledge comes from our senses. Uh-huh. And so that, like, po- poetic knowledge. Yeah, poetic knowledge. This is very, that's very interesting because I, w- I, would, I would feel that they'd be more the platonic uh, idea of knowledge. But um, that's very interesting. But isn't that so true? That I, I love I this line. One cannot become a craftsman simply by hearsay. Yeah, no, no, no. I, like, I totally agree. What a man. You, can, you can read all about God. You can read all about Him. There's so many people who are scholars who read all about God all the time. Yeah, who are atheists. Yeah, I mean, like I know, like I've actually had conversations with with somebody who was telling me and admitting, like very honestly and upfront about, like this is a struggle. Saying instead of praying, I it's like no, I'm gonna go read this book on prayer. Yeah. And he said, I know I should be praying. Yeah. But I it's I don't want to. I would rather read this book on prayer. Uh just because prayer is hard. It's it's it, it is, is arduous it is, and it difficult. Is difficult. Right? Um sometimes it is sweet and delicious. Mm-hmm. Um every time I go into adoration but not very on, often on Wednesday mornings when I go like for my holy hour. Yeah. I walk in and like I mentally prepare. Like knowing, like this is gonna be tough. Yeah. Like I, because I'm about to like try to focus for a full hour on one thing, and like I'm walking in, like you know, like kind yeah. of like ready to go, like excited, like like thinking, like I I gotta amp myself up because like I'm going to sit here and kneel down for a full hour, focused on this. So um, the last one here, number seven. The seventh form of bodily discipline consists in, this one was a surprise to me, questioning those with experience about all of our thoughts and actions. Counsel. Counsel, yes. But um, it just I, the thing that surprised me is that he reckons this a bodily discipline. Once again, we're not talking about... The killing pride. Exactly. Humility um, and making yourself physically ask the question stop you know like you just mm-hmm. don't want to do it mm-hmm. i would like to have the counsel i got it i know what to do I, I like right sometimes i think that like we go we might have a conversation with someone hoping that they like oh, i'm gonna broach this topic hoping that they volunteer mm-hmm. the counsel because mm-hmm. i don't want to have to i don't just want to have to come out and say like would you tell me like what right. do you think please right um but what he's saying here is no, no, no. This is part of the bodily discipline. Is no formally ask and submit yourself in humility. There's been several times where I've to had this to other person. With you. Like there have been times where I've like had like I've called you up and you're like, hey, I need I need to talk to you. And you're like, okay, yeah, cool. And like we've we've met up and I'm like, okay, dude. Here's what I'm thinking. Like, tell me what your thoughts are. Well, we we had some of those conversations this weekend. Yeah, we even had yeah, absolutely, and just like, but that, sometimes it's tough to do. Yeah, sometimes they are. Um, sometimes they're not. It depends on the person you're, you know, you're talking to. But I do think uh, you know, that that resounds with me. Where I've had moments where it's like, I really hope if I just kind of like broach this topic, that they'll jump that in. They, that they'll like offer like, oh well, would you like to know what I would, right. what I think, or would you know. Right. And it's like, oh, sure. You know, that right. way I can kind of pawn it off. Save my humility a little. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, and that way I don't have to come out and like, I really need your help. Right. You know? Yeah. That's a, that's a whole pride thing. Yeah. So um, I really, lo- I really enjoyed these because um, they were different. They were not what I expected them to be. Mm. Um, I think if you go read other people about bodily discipline, you're going to get more um, like, bodily things mm-hmm. um what i thought was so interesting about these were the way he came about and approached some of these things that are essential i love it like I, again i love i love this series and hopefully we'll have uh, quite a few more episodes on like different things that they talk about on this because yeah. um i i have my my uh spiritual life has benefited from from reading these yeah um, is the series expensive? You you just bought you just bought these. Um, no, it's not. I mean, it depends on what you what you say expensive. I mean, how I much? Think, how much? I, I, how I much was like this a, edition? What? This is this is a fine edition, um, but it's paperback. It's paperback. I don't. I don't. 
to my knowledge, they don't make hardback. Okay. I, I I searched for it because I prefer hard. I I'd rather pay more for of a course. hardback. Yeah. Um, but to my knowledge, I I, I believe the four volume set is under a hundred dollars. Well, that's well worth it. Eighty dollars. I think it's eighty dollars. That's well worth it because um. I mean, we, for these, the four this volume is like, set. This is like master the masters in here. And what's beautiful about these sets is is that uh, you don't have to read cover to cover. No, like you know, it's like, it's like oh, here's twenty pages that could absolutely change my life. You know, like like literally twenty pages that will change the way I think about prayer. Twenty pages that I would like that will change the way I think about mortification. It's a yeah, it's a slow read, but um, the sections are often are very short, um, like. The one, the one we just covered. Let me just see. Um, this is four pages, right? Like all, of, all of this stuff that we just covered tonight was four. The there was four pages in here. Yeah. Okay, and so it doesn't. It's not like oh, I had to read a hundred pages right, to, to get, get something out of this to get um, right, right, the right. things that we talked about on this episode today. That was all in four pages. Yeah. Now all, some of the sections are much longer. Yeah. But um it's beautiful. It's just rich. It's a rich text. Yeah. Okay. Uh join us on patreon.com slash the Catholic Man's show. Uh appreciate all the new Patreon members. We had a couple uh I say a couple. We had quite a few new patrons for the beginning of the year. Again, like guys, it it just really helps us um you know move move this ball forward and and, and Yeah. Um I mean Okay, so the reason we have this volume is is because of our patrons, right? Um, I mean, we we buy books. Um, you know, we we, we kind of made a decision here recently about you know what how should we be allocating our Patreon money, and we decided, hey, we're gonna start pumping it into having trying to get good resources um, so we can bring them to you guys in the form of episodes, mm -hmm. make you aware of some of these resources. You know, help improve your life or hopefully whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Cheers. Cheers.